for six months, I didn't see any of my friends, including my best friend, Brian Mandel, because yeah. I was so humiliated. I was so embarrassed. Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of the Bad Times Good Stories Podcast. My name is Joe Flanders. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a dandy, swell, badass, cool, enjoyable day. All of those things. Uh, I know I'm having a good day. Got a new desk chair, so that's pretty exciting. I'm living the dream. Let me tell you, this thing reclines, if you're watching. Whoa! How about that? Ugh. Anyway, yeah, I'm good. Things are fun. I've uh, been teaching at the summer camp, teaching kids how to make movies all summer. It's been a, a lot of fun. I definitely had an old man moment. One of the kids was like, oh, you're funny. What's your Snapchat handle? And I said, I don't have Snapchat, uh, but I do own some of their stocks. <laughs> so... Which was a pretty good pickup, I must say. Bought them at six dollars a share, up to uh, seventeen now. Of course, I probably just jinxed it, and I'll lose all my money, much like I did when I bought shares of Movie Pass. We all know how that one turned out. Uh, I'm an idiot. Anyway, uh, I am really excited to share with you today's episode with Brian O'Connell, BOC, as he uh, is known as. Um, kind of a comedy legend here in LA. He's performed at all the different. Um, comedy theaters, and he's very involved with the Pack Theater. I would dare say a founding member, but I don't know that for a hundred percent certainty. Anyway, he's a he's an incredible guy. We also went to the same college, uh, several years apart, but uh, I met him at a, a school of the arts get together, and um, he said that he had the ultimate uh, breakup story, failed relationship story. So of course, my ears perked up. Brian's relationship, he was engaged, and uh, the engagement completely fell apart when they moved to Los Angeles. And uh, the icing on the cake, this was not why it ended, but uh, truly the icing on the cake of a shitty situation was when his ex-fiance, fiance at the time, had sex with Vern Troyer, also known as Mini-Me. Um, yeah, so we talk all about it. And uh, the many reasons why it, it fell apart. But uh, this was a, lot, a number of years ago. Brian is over it. He's in a healthy relationship now, which is why he's able to laugh about it and uh, why I was happy to hear about it. So I hope you enjoy it. If you do, give us that five stars on Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much, so, so very much to uh, the recent um, people who have reviewed. Uh, it means so much to me. Thank you to Death Metal Dude. And Jimmy the Greek 80 and Rob Morris Yo for leaving uh, very kind, thoughtful reviews. Again, it's just nice to know that people enjoy the show. So, uh, also, thank you to the people who have commented on Podbean as well as YouTube, letting me you know where you watch the show. Um, I know that one in particular person listens to the show while doing benign household chores. So, I'm glad that I could make those slightly more enjoyable. As always, check out badtimesgoodstoriespod.com, and you can email me at badtimesgoodstoriespodcast at gmail.com. That's all I've got for now, so without further ado, here's my conversation with Brian O'Connor. That's a nice little video set up. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> yeah, forgive yeah. me for my for my allergies as I <laughs> sniff my way through this entire podcast. But at least at least now that it's video, people can see that I'm not doing cocaine. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It leaves a little less to the imagination. Yeah, which is uh unfortunate because I'm like, I have allergies and they're like, Well, you're doing cocaine. I'm like, Yeah, I know we're in Hollywood and all that, but also like I grew up in a family with a like with a lot of addicts, so I yeah. got to see a lot of that like firsthand. Like I've never done cocaine, I've never done heroin. I was like, nope. I see where that leads. I feel like it goes <laughs> no, one of two ways you. with people who grow up in that: either they fall into it, or they have the complete opposite. Oh, a hundred percent. Have you seen that new like that new sort of like meme that's going around now? It's not, I guess not meme, but it's sort of like. You know, people are like, name six concerts, one of them being alive. This one was like, when did you know that your parents were bad parents for the first time? Mm -hmm. uh, and there was, a, and then one that just like broke my heart. He was like, this kid who was six, he was like, I was six years old. 
I had been um, peeing into a cup for my mom for school uh, once a month. And one time I was playing with my brother and I, my mom came in and I stood up to do it. And my brother, without even looking up from the board game we were playing, just grabbed me by the shirt and said, she's using you to pass your drug test. Sit down. Oh. And that's, he was like, and I sit down and went back to playing a game. I'm like six years old. Oh, I was just like, man. oh, God. Ouch. To have the illusion Ouch. that most of us realize on some level that our parents are not perfect, but yes. to have that illusion broken at six. Oh, yeah. And beyond just not perfect, using your six year old. Yeah. And he didn't to, say how old, how old his older brother was, but yeah. like, it's not any good age no. for him to just be like that sort of burnt out. And just be like, sit down. She's using a your drug test. Ugh. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Here, well, honey, piss it in this cup. It's for school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like what? It's a school assignment. Yeah, like how? Like if that? If the older brother hadn't said that, like how long do you think the mom could keep that going? You know, he's in like eighth grade. I, I mean, at least until double digits. <laughs> We're talking fourth grade, <laughs> nine, ten years old. Maybe around minimum. the time that he forgot, he didn't. He realized Santa wasn't real. Yeah, he or maybe where he like maybe he asked uh, his teacher and was like, right. uh, "I'm supposed to like go to? Should I just start be?" Being in a cup here for you guys <laughs> yeah. instead of doing it at home Would that expedite the process and then the, yeah and then the teacher being like uh first of all expedite that's a very big word for a young child number number two what <laughs> that's a that's an interesting pta meeting that uh, is yeah yeah, yeah it's like, hey i noticed like reading an f but I, i've been turning in all the p i've been turning all <laughs> do i get some sort of extra credit for that because i noticed that no one else is turning in their p <laughs> Don't worry, mommy. I'll bring it to school with me today. Yeah. Ooh, oh, ooh. <laughs> well, I'm Yikes. glad that you went the opposite direction. Yeah, to come to all that for sure. Like, I mean, I went. I mean, I went to art school just like you. Well, sure. Yeah. Yeah. You that's uh, that's the time to experiment. Exactly. I'll, I also have a very good. Um, I mean, very good for me at least. I think um, my <clears throat> my rule of drugs is if you need more than two accoutrement to do that drug that's a bad drug don't do that drug mm -hmm. like weed it's like lighter papers yes. lighter bowl you're great yep. right heroin needle lighter spoon you know rubber band that's a bad drug too many that's, that's, that's too many that's too many accoutrements how many accoutrements do you need for meth uh it's sort of the same, same thing you need like heroin a lighter a glass okay. and something to break it up with like you know mm -hmm. all those kind of things okay so uh, this is a this is a yeah there you go guys <laughs> Is this, is this a lead in? Is this yeah. a soft opening? Yeah, this is our, our hot open. <laughs> no, forget a cold open. This is a hot open. We're going right in. Here's how you do drugs, kids. Listen to, listen to your pickle friends here. Yeah. <laughs> Could you close the cabinet? I would love to close the cabinet. Because I run a, a tight ship around here. Yeah, yeah that looks I so do much like, better. I do like the frosted glass cabinets. I you can never see seen what's it in it, before. but you can't see what's in it. Exactly. I a little tease. So you mentioned you're flying to Mexico City in a couple days. Yes. Um, Yes. I'm flying to Ohio and then North Carolina. Uh, where in Ohio? Columbus. Oh, yeah. Columbus. Which is where I'm from. Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. Yes. Excellent. It'd I be like... weird if I was flying to Columbus and not from Ohio. I, I rarely find anybody yeah. who's like, oh, yeah, I'm going on vacation to Well, sometimes Columbus. a lot of people say that, like, you know, I'm flying into Columbus and I'm going to... Oh uh, yeah, go carry elsewhere. over. Yeah, because yeah. I'm like, yeah, Columbus is that it's it's not Columbus. It's the Cincinnati airport, which is not technically in Cincinnati. Yeah, it's, it's in Northern Kentucky. Yeah, yeah, and you have to like. It's a ghost town. Yeah, and you have to leave on like the tram to get to the other. And I was like, okay. Yep. Yeah. Columbus is nice. Named after John Glenn, the airport. Oh, so that you know, is true. we got that. We got that going for us. <laughs> but nice. anyway, I am not a good flyer. And I'm wondering if you have any mm. sage words of wisdom for me. Uh, this is the irony is because I used to be a pretty good flyer. Now I don't do too well with turbulence. Yeah, exactly. And the reason for that is my older sister. I blame her. Um, my sister uh, was in New York City for 9-11. Uh, also, my sister was on the Hudson flight. Oh, so, dear God. Yeah. Uh, she was on the cover of USA Today. It's the famous photo of the It's the plane, the frogman, and then the life raft with the three white women. That's yeah. my sister on the far right. That's, wow. That's Lisa... That's Lisa Holy at the time. Shit. Lisa English now. Lisa O'Connell standing. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. You go to my Facebook. You see all the pictures of like my parents with like Sully. Yeah. And all that kind of right. stuff. Like, yeah. uh, Did somebody play her in the movie? Oh, that's the thing. Uh, Jordan Crabtree, uh, JD Crabtree from uh, School of the Arts was an office PA on the movie. Really? On the Sully movie. And he sent me a couple of photographs from 
uh, like, you know, from the production office where they had everything laid out. Uh, and then my sister, uh, like got to go and meet and all that. And, you know, the, the plane is at, is in Charlotte where she lives at mm. the aviation museum. So she, there's a photograph of her sitting in the actual seat. Um, I have never seen the movie. I never will see the movie. No, yeah, neither have no, I. Not, yeah, for obvious reasons. I, just oh, yeah. don't need to. I don't need to relive that. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, you more so than me. Yeah. But uh, from all from all the reports that I've heard, so where we figured it out, um, it is not like historically accurate. I would of like who's so. sitting where. Like I think I think a heavy set African American woman is sitting in the seat where my sister sat, which Damn I think is, which I think is funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so so yeah, like uh, ever since then, even though I know that like it's the, the odds are a billion to one. <laughs> Uh, when when it, the shaking starts happening, I do like, mm, yep. but because of our work, we the jobs that we have to do, we have to fly all the time. Right. I, I travel, especially in 2018, I traveled a bunch. Yeah. I traveled everywhere uh, teaching and going around. So I was just like, uh, yeah, I was in Cincinnati last year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, doing that. Some, some of my friends there. Yeah, you just kind of got to accept it, right? Yeah, and I and another thing too because of the non the, like the non, you know, the drug addicts in the family, I have never taken pills either. I it's it's a my girlfriend has to fight me to take vitamins. Wow. Uh, like I eat gummy vitamins like I'm a child. Yeah, so do I. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there you go. Like, yeah, little adult gummies. I do it for her, you know. Like, yeah. I don't, who knows. So the idea of like <laughs> taking Xanax or something like yeah, that, like yeah. no, nope, not for me. Yep. Uh, cuz that's the other thing too. If like I hit that water like I want to be I want to be Johnny on the spot. Sure. I want to be able to get out and yeah. help other people get out. Mhm. Uh so yeah, I, it will be say something for that is like um my sister doesn't have great memories. I wouldn't think of so. it, but uh it was like no one, no one, like everyone. It's it's a nice thing to uh, to remind you that like human beings are uh, basically good, yeah, and decent. Everyone helped each other. No one was like stampeding. Everyone sure that they, you know, everyone got off the the boat together and were yeah. and taking care of each other. Um, the only reason that we knew about it initially is because my sister she she worked for Belks. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know, so the, for those of you that know, it's like the Macy's of the Southeast. Yep. Um, and so that, that flight she took like six times a year. So it's her and like five other people that she worked with. Right. And thankfully one of the guys that she was traveling with had his Blackberry in his, uh, breast pocket. And so they literally standing on the plane, he handed his Blackberry around to everyone, not just them, but everyone was yeah. like, I'm okay. I'm alive. But we, other people need to call their families. And they just did that on, wow. on the wing of the plane until, <clears throat> in, until his battery ran out wow. to make sure to let as many families know as possible that they're Oof. Oh Yeah. Boy, <laughs> yeah, my sister, I feel so much better now. <laughs> yeah, my sister got uh, saved by a Coast Guard uh, boat, but she couldn't remember who it was. But the one year anniversary, my mom went up with her to New York uh, to meet that. And then, as they were sitting and talking around, like my mom was just talking to this guy, and he was like, "Oh, that was me. I'm the one that pulled your daughter out of the boat." And she was like, "Stay right here," because my sister had no memory of it. Right. He came up, and he was like, "Oh, yeah, that's totally you." And my sister was like, "Oh, I get to hug you and thank you now." Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's pretty fun, but like, yeah, my parents got me the book, you know, sure. Miracle on the Hudson. I flipped to the back, saw her name. I was like, ah, that's cool. Yeah. Never read it. No, never going to. No, don't need to relive that day. No, not yeah. at all. Well, cool. Well, hopefully our flights are, uh, you know, yeah, forgettable. So, so that would be my advice. Long <laughs> TLDR version. I don't know. Have your sister that's like uh, just snake bit when it comes to flying, and then the, <laughs> you flying, no problem. Because the odds are like a billion to one. Right. Yeah. What are the chances? Exactly. Yeah. It's And I know that. It's just mm. the spectacle of it all. Because you're so high in the air. Like, I've done a lot of cross-country road trips, which statistically are far more dangerous. Oh, hell yeah. But there's this perceived ability of control where it's like, sure, you know. Yeah. But I know if a semi sneezes, I'm dead. Yeah. That, you yeah. Know? Like, <laughs> if he jackknives, that's it's done. Yeah. So. I'd like to think that I have lightly <clears throat> fast reflexes, oh, yeah. but I don't. But it's just the in my head. I'm like, yeah, but I'm in control. I don't know who the fuck this this no. pilot is. It helps too that my girlfriend uh, is a huge traveler. She's been yeah. to, uh, she's been to all. To, uh, next year she's going to Antarctica, so she'll have been to all seven continents. Oh wow! Okay. And just with the two of us being together, like I, I flew, I've been to Ireland with her, and I've been to Japan with her, and then okay. we're going to we're going to Africa uh, over Thanksgiving. So. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, when you quit your job and start being freelance, you don't have to be like, oh, who's going to cover my class? I and know. I don't know if I'm going to pay. I was like, oh, wait a minute. There is nothing. There's nothing. <laughs> yeah. Give me enough heads up. I could do anything. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. how's this for a transition? Uh, you mentioned that generally people are good and caring and kind. 
from I've what you tell me, you had uh, an experience with somebody who maybe wouldn't fit that bill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, when I was back in North Carolina, uh, I I have an ex fiance, um, and so we were dating while I was still uh, in school, but we had known each other much longer than that. She was my best friend since the eighth grade. Oh really? Oh yeah. She okay. was. Um, and you grew up in North Carolina? Uh, yeah, I was. Uh, I grew up in. I was born in Greensboro Hospital. I grew up in High Point, and I went to school in Winston Salem. I am Piedmont Triad through and through. Nice. Okay. So yeah. you've known her since eighth grade. Yeah, and so. Um, <laughs> And she was, uh, she had, uh, she was, you know, being raised by her. Her parents were separated. Her father lived in Cincinnati. Her mom lived in, uh, in Thomasville, okay. uh, North Carolina at the time. Uh, and had, you know, never drank, never smoked a cigarette, anything like that. Uh, and we were like best friends, uh, you know, talk, you know, for hours on the phone at night, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and then she went to live with her dad for a while. Uh, did like a, like her, her senior year of high school. She was like a year ahead of me. Okay. And then, um, and then came back. And at that point, she like, she uh, sort of started sowing her wild oats and all that. Um, mm -hmm. Had you I guys remained in touch when she was? Oh, in Ohio? for sure, for yeah, sure. Like we, talking. this I'm showing my age, but uh, this was pre-internet days. We were like, we wrote letters. <laughs> nice, yeah, good, old, Ooh, yeah. good six-page letters, loose leaf, lined back and mm -hmm. on both sides. And were you guys still just friends at that point, or was it becoming like clear that there may have been feelings? Or oh no, we slept together. Oh okay. yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, when she came back and visited, uh, I don't think I was her first, but I was definitely I was in the top five there. Was she your first? Uh no. Okay. Um. Nice. But uh, but also, <laughs> yeah, I like that joke. Nice. Uh, and then and like back and forth, and it was always this kind of thing. Like we were never single at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then she moved back to uh, North Carolina when I was like a junior, I believe. And then I, I I broke up with my girlfriend, who was also a school of the arts person at the time. And it was it was ugly and not good. Um, but thankfully, I mean, we're still really good friends. That's good. Uh, me and the ex, mm -hmm. uh, not the ex fiance, the, yeah. the girl before her. Um, so we started dating, and and honestly, and the and the issue with the ex fiance is that. Um, First of all, super talented. Like I feel like I'm a I'm an above average actor. She's an incredible actress. Mm -hmm. Um, she wrote poetry and was like good at it. Uh, beautiful. When I say beautiful, if it was possible for Elizabeth Hurley and Julia Roberts to have a baby, that's what she looked like. Oh boy. Uh, but the problem was, and I should have learned this the the first minute, the first time I met her dad. Yeah. For three and a half hours, she couldn't get a word in edgewise. Like uh, we were just like two peas in a pod. Mm -hmm. And then long, long time after that, like thinking back i was like oh of course i was the father replacement because she he left their family very early on and it was mm -hmm. like abandonment issues like, okay mm -hmm. uh but also whereas she, she she had a very her her biggest probably flaw was that um if there was an easy way out to do things or a shortcut she would do that sure so she started uh to make money she started dancing at uh tiffany's cabaret in greensboro okay and making money at the time i was like at the time i'll be honest i'm in my early 20s that's sexy as hell i was gonna say yeah 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 and, uh, some, yeah. yeah and since i since i grew up in like pool halls and working in restaurants and stuff like that it was very easy because at the time, like if you go, they're like they had a pretty strict like no boyfriends policy because you see your girlfriend who's a stripper dancing for a guy and then you get all butt hurt yeah. about it. And you go and want to fight and all that. But all the bouncers and managers love me because they're like, hey, no, I get it. It's a job. Yeah, I've been there. I've done it. Like, And then I would just talk bar management. And then even after a while, the other girls were just like, oh, that's that's, you know, that's Kira. That's not her real name. That's the name that she was dancing under at the time. Sure. She was like, "Oh, that's Kira's boyfriend. He's fine." Yeah. Uh, if anything, the uh, like, if I would get a dance from somebody, uh, the girlfriend was like, "Yeah, that's hot, dude." Like, or if someone, I was like, "No, I'm I'm fine. I'm just here." That and then one of the girls would be like, "What do I care if you're Kira's boyfriend?" Like doing that. And then mm -hmm. the managers would get mad at them. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> this guy's cool. Why start shit? Why are you trying to start shit? They have a great relationship. <laughs> and at the time, I was like, okay. And then she had. Um, uh, 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 at the time, a small problem with cocaine, mm -hmm. and then we sat down. I was like, "You know how I feel about this. You know what my family is, and it's like this can't be." And she was like, "You're right. I'm going to stop for us, and it's good." And then when we started talking about like, "Hey, because uh, I graduated, but then I started working for the school." Oh, okay. Yeah, I was the production coordinator. I worked under um, uh, Janice Wellerstein, who was the production manager at the time, okay. and then I answered to uh, uh, William E. Buck, God rest his soul, mm -hmm. uh, of and the Buck uh, building. Yeah, and uh, and David Elkins. Which was which was great. 
Um, and and Lupino, I worked really hard with uh, with Joe Lupino. Love that man. Love that man to death. Uh, so I was there for another two years, and then it was starting like, all right, well, it's time. It's time for us to make the move out to Los Angeles and sort of follow our careers. And how long had you been together at that point? Oh, uh, those thoughts. God, at that point, we'd been together for almost four years, but okay, we had been but... best friends for like over a decade. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like when I proposed, uh, I went to Cincinnati over New Year's of two thousand. Went out with her dad. Like I asked her father's like permission, all that. Like very old school, and he was yeah. like, very flattered. And like we went out to like. He was like, let me take you out. He was a, like an old beatnik. So he was like, let me take you out to Cincinnati has one of the best haberdasheries in the country. It's one of <laughs> the true. oldest. Let's yeah. go. Let's go look at hats. And she was like furious that we were hanging out together and like excluding her. I was like, oh, bitch, take a step back and like yeah. look at. You could probably figure out why. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I proposed on New Year's Eve of 2000. Like, I want to spend the next millennium with you. Ooh, like, very nice. corny, very cheesy. <laughs> so we it, we had been together for a hot minute. Yeah. Um, And then I was like, all right, we're going to move out there. I have this. Um, I'm finishing up my job. But at that time, I also booked a gig with a thing called RockCity.com. Okay. Uh, earlier days of the internet, before before the internet was ready for like web series. And sure. It was like one of the first web series. Like Hunt Lowry was one of the big co-producers on it. Mm -hmm. Executive producers. He's the guy that produced, you know, uh, uh, The Last of the Mohicans and all those oh, big wow. movies. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, he was one of the big money guys. And there was a, a gig called Rock City Europe where they took you. It was like a road worlds slash real world kind of challenge thing uh six of us five weeks five countries 75 dollars per diem fifteen hundred dollars and they took i went to england france germany switzerland and italy wow and i was like all right i have to do this gig over the summer yeah and then we're gonna move out together and she was like well my cousin is moving in february so i'll go out early mm -hmm. set up shop for us sure. sort of get a lay of the land right and like anything else, she I was like, okay, we'll do that. Uh, mm. uh, and between yeah, February of you know 2000, August 28th of 2000 is when I moved here. So in between that time, we had a long conversation. I was like, you can't dance out there if you want to be taken seriously as an actress because. If you're not, and then she started dancing at Crazy Girls mm. on La Brea. And I'm like, yep. you can't. That that's how they'll know you, right? Exactly. That's why the the little known secret <laughs> is if you want to be an actress but want to make the money of stripping, you go to Simi Valley. Right. You dance out there because it's all retired cops. So you're going to be safe, and they're all just spending their pension money, and they all just want to sort of take care of you. You can dance there for three, four nights a week, make a lot of money, and then be in L.A. But you might as well Simi Valley might as well be on the moon. Oh, right? most definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> and and again. Uh, remember, I'm the cool guy sitting in the strip club in Greensboro, North Carolina, just talking to the girls. I'm like, yeah, what's going on? So what are you doing? All right, that's cool. No, nah, I don't want to dance. I'm going to hang out. Right. Uh, so this is not me putting down sex workers at all. I'm like, if you're going to do it, make the money this way. Right. Uh, yeah. I was like, As opposed to Crazy Girls, which is probably the most well-known yeah. strip club in LA. Oh, when I <laughs> when I was when I was living out here, the very, because I've, August 28th is when I moved here, and then she left me on Halloween. Uh, so... <laughs> very brief window like i mean i was sitting i was in crazy girls sitting at the uh, husbands and boyfriends table <laughs> which was me i shit you not this is one of the weirdest nights of my life it's me it's peter green um rob zombie <laughs> and alan and robin thick who are there together trolling for girls together uh so it's a real yeah so it's me zed <laughs> alan thick the dad from growing pains yes and okay. robin thick his son <laughs> oh boy yeah uh, that's an interesting pair yeah i was like oh these guys Father wing bonding they wingman for each other all right <laughs> okay alan thick is a dog uh i think they can Rob's say this now you know almost 20 years later sure so she started dancing and of course that life it was like and then the cocaine started being a problem again and then because she tried to work a regular job for a little bit but her and her of course she didn't do any research so when she moved in with her cousin it was in redondo beach and i'm mm -hmm. like oh you're living in redondo beach and then trying to go to auditions in hollywood and san Monica. i'm like and you're running out of money because it's just gas over right. and over again yeah uh and then she tried to work like a regular job like you know <laughs> uh being like you know a secretary or an executive assistant and just but the money was too easy and the lifestyle was right and it was like a party but it's that sort of self-loathing again mm -hmm. and slowly but surely so between february and august when i moved out here like i actually came out and visited her before i went overseas because like hey you go see your fiance before you go overseas yeah. god forbid you die in a plane crash right. over the atlantic right yes 
Uh, that's when it was like she thought she might be a lesbian. Oh, uh, no. She had done some uh, some Skinamax stuff. Mm-hmm. It's an easy one to find because um, it's called The Seduction of Maxine. <laughs> she did it under an assumed name about another uh, softcore porn artist who kind of looks similar, but it's her. You can tell because she's got an eye of raw tattoo on one of the uh, on the inside of her wrist. Uh-huh. Uh, it's the it's very easy to find because it's the only soft core that Tara Patrick ever made. Oh. so it's very quick. <laughs> um, I, I, most of those I didn't find out about until after she had already left me. I was curious about that. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay. um, one I knew about ahead of time because it was like, oh, it's an acting gig, but it was way more core than soft. <laughs> uh, and she mm. came back sort of like in tears. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, and then you know. And then next thing you know, like, you know, yada, yada, yada. Uh, she owes me four grand. Ooh. Uh, she pawned the ring, oh, which no. I also found out about only after she had, she had left me. And about six weeks after she had left me, there, a thing came in the mail. And my sister used to work for, work for a pawn shop mm. in, uh, in High Point, coins and stuff. So I know what those things look like. Sure. And I'm like, yeah, this is against federal law to open else, some, someone else's mail, but <laughs> uh, you have 10 days until uh, to retrieve your item or it'll permanently be to us. And I called her up and I was like, no, hello. No, no, no. I was like, just tell me it's not the ring. Mm-hmm. She was like, oh, thank God. They told me they had lost it. I was like, wrong answer. <laughs> Hung up. Uh, yeah. And then so I found out about some of the Skinamax things afterwards. I found out that she'd been having a long affair with one of the other dancers. So and then uh, here it gets oh, it gets better. She moved when she left me. She moved in with one of her dancer friends and her boyfriend, the boyfriend who had uh, failed out of medical school because he uh, when they got to the dissection part. He just he passed out like a light. Yeah. Uh, and his dad was like a big guy in like the local politics in Massachusetts, like, mm-hmm. you know, state politics. Uh, and he was in a bad motorcycle accident where he'd been hit. So he had this huge settlement. Uh, and so he was sort of working off of that. And she stole him from, from her the, friends. Oh, no. They moved down to Florida together because he was also an amateur pilot. And then he started running drugs uh, sure. back and forth. Uh, to Puerto Rico and Cuba and back and forth, oh and his partner uh, hit him over the head and knocked him out and stole the drugs. And it was he owed two kilos of cocaine to uh, the Hell's Angels. And I don't know how much you know about the Hell's Angels, Joe, but if you don't have their money or their cocaine, they frown upon that. I would imagine. Yeah. yeah so slap on the wrist. So sh- he called in a favor to his dad. Uh, I have this all on second hand, but I have it all on very good authority, and I don't want to throw the person under the budge sure. who yeah. uh, let me know. Uh, budge? Bust. <laughs> um, so he called his dad to help him out, and she and my ex fiance and this dude went into... Uh, they had had a kid together by this point. Oh, dear God. Oh yeah, oh. Um, and uh, so they went into witness protection. His dad called in some favor. They went into prote- witness protection for either six weeks or six months. I can't remember. And then the coup de gras, which is I was telling you the other night, I went every bar, uh, bar tab. I'm like, I bet my bar tab versus your bar tab, I have a worse breakup story than you do. Yeah. Uh, so I was working at Hollywood Billiards, uh, running that place, and I came home really late one night, and I had been watching a movie earlier in the day. <laughs> So when I turn on the TV, just like uh, uh, the Skinamax movie that I didn't know about. Oh, came on, you found out first. Ca- came <laughs> out, came on that. And I started laughing my balls off. And my roommate, Anna, who uh, Anna Weber, uh, who's a he, she's a D.A. in Chicago now. Uh she, saint, salt of the earth because she, my ex fiance and, and Anna knew each other mm-hmm. from Cincinnati. OK, Um uh, so when I moved in and she moved out and dumped me, Anna was like, you're a really good guy. You didn't deserve this to happen to you. I'm not going to be friends with her anymore because for a host of reasons. <laughs> sure. But you can stay here. And we've been very good friends ever since. Like She saved my life because yeah. otherwise I would have effed off back to North Carolina and probably like killed myself. Mm, yeah. uh, so Anna comes into my room, knocks on the door. She's like, oh, my God, are you OK? Because it's like three in the morning. Right. And, and I was like, laughing. Uh, I'm like, she's like, I'm on my knees. Right. Like tears running. She's like, are you crying? You're laughing right now. I'm like, I am laughing. This is the most hilarious thing I've ever seen. She was like, what? And I was like, that's her. Uh, I almost said her name. <laughs> uh, that's her. She was like, no. And I'll never forget. And I was like, maybe wait till I can see her face. Because <laughs> it was all like ass shots at that point. Uh, and she was like, Oh my God, you're laughing? I was like, Yeah, I'm totally cool with it. And she was like, oh, Thank God, I need to tell you something so badly. So at the time, because uh, Anna uh, at the time was dating a girl um, and uh, would go and visit uh, you know, my ex fiance at work while they were roommates together. Mm-hmm. Uh, because if you like girls 
and you like playing pool, Crazy Girl is the best place to do that if you're related because you know it's it's perfect. Yep. Um, and yeah, and she's and also and it's just a sweet girl, so she just again makes friends wherever she goes. Yeah, so she's yeah. like, I'm she's like, I'm literally just here to see my friend, and I'm getting some free drinks because my friend works here. Also, all of you seem lovely. Yeah, I'll play pool with you. Sure. I don't care. And also, she's beautiful because she was like a model when she was a kid. She's yeah. an actress, right? Uh, so there was one night, uh, my uh, a celebrity that was in the uh, in Crazy Girls, mm. uh, because he had the cocaine, uh, gave my ex fiance, uh, currently fiance at the time, yeah, um, gave her the hotel room key, and she went over there after her shift and had sex with him and did all of his cocaine and then like rolled into the apartment the next day at one o'clock in the afternoon smoking a cigarette and Anna was like yeah <laughs> and uh I'm sort of giving you the punchline before the setup but she went I have sunk to a new low and then walked straight into her uh straight into her room shut the door and didn't come out for two days <sighs> the celebrity that she left uh with and cheated on me with was Vern Troyer Jr. Oh, many me, many me. My ex fiance star fucked a midget. Okay, yeah, All right. little person. Sorry, that yeah. is an unfortunate term. So yeah, oh, that no, that's that's the ace. <laughs> that's 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 flipping that's flipping the royal flush on the nut. No one and maybe they're like me. I'm like yeah, many me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she sunk to a new low, which is uh, a better joke than ever I could have come up with. So, like, had tip to that. So, yeah, that was sort of my introduction to Los Angeles and Hollywood. <laughs> and then for about like for about three years, I just went to a downward. Sp- I, I knew a bunch of guys that had graduated mm-hmm. uh, and moved out here, but like for six months, I didn't see any of my friends, including my best friend Brian Mandel, because yeah. I was so humiliated, I was so embarrassed. I was working at this pool hall. Uh, and I started at the at the bottom. I was just handing out balls to the table and stuff. Um, staying up late, you know, drinking, uh, just generally feeling bad for myself. Sure. Watching the same three movies over and over again because those are the only ones that I owned. What were, what were they? Uh, it was uh, <laughs> The Last of Mohicans, uh, Goodfellas, and uh, uh, South Park, Bigger, Longer, Uncut. <laughs> those are literally the only three VHS tapes. <laughs> That he had, and I had no money, and I had my cat with me. And I'm in this tiny room, and the cat's staying in the in the closet with the litter box and all that. It's all God. screwed up. Eventually, the other ding dong roommate moved out, and I got to move into the big room sure. and have life. Uh, yeah, and so Ooh. I just I ran a pool hall and felt bad for me. And it really wasn't until 2003 where uh, one of my friends uh, who Anna, who I met through Anna was just like, you, you know, your film school buddies are great, but like, they're at the same level that that you are. They can't help you. None of you can help each other. She's like, you got to expand. She's like, take a, take a comedy class or something. She's like, also look, look at the way you're dressed. You want to be an actor? You're dressed like a writer. You're Mm -hmm. dressed like a writer that like, that lost his career 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Cause I am, as you can see from this, (laughs) this is how I dress. I'm like, yeah, hoodie, uh, some t-shirt and jeans. Yeah. And that's how, um, and then around that time is when the girl who I had uh, broken up with to get with my ex-fiance, who I'd stay friendly with, was doing a show at Iowa West. And she was like, you want to come see my improv team? I was like, yeah, sure. What time? She was like, it's 11 o'clock on a Sunday. I'm like, I don't have HBO because I can't afford it. So I won't be watching, uh, I won't be watching, you know, Six, you know, feet, six under. feet Under or The Sopranos. <laughs> and I'm like, sure. And I went and they happened to just have the greatest show that they've ever done. Yeah. And I was like, I want to do this. And I had missed sign up for classes by like two weeks. Uh, but I, I called the next day at 12.01, you know, they're like, oh, the office opens at noon. I was like, yeah, they're like, yeah, we're always taking, you know, level one. So I, I got into Iowa West. I started taking classes there March 1st of 2003. And then that's what really got me on my funk. It gave me a purpose. It gave me a community, right? It gave me a community, gave me something to belong to and something that was mine that I felt like I was good at and that I earned on my own and had zero to do with the lady because all right. my best friends knew her like right. when we all lived together like she was around constantly and mm-hmm. all that so i just needed something to sort of break me on my funk so i wasted probably the first three years sure that i was out yeah here yeah. <laughs> yeah doing nothing and, and think it was that finding iowa west and then having a phone call with my dad uh, who is my hero was like you didn't he was like you didn't go out there to be a fucking bartender you could have stayed in north carolina and done that yep you, you you have you have more than that you're not a goddamn bartender and i was like <laughs> And that's really what I was like, yeah. I got to do something. Kicking I, can't, the ass. I can't let this man down. I can't let down my hero. <laughs> <laughs> 
So several mm-hmm. questions. Um, yeah. So it was your friend Anna who told you about the Vern Troyer thing? Oh, yeah. Okay. So how did the conversation with your then soon to be ex fiance go? Oh, she never, no, she'd already left me by that point. Oh, she'd already left I was, you. I was well into, I was probably maybe six to eight months into uh, working at that pool hall and just trying to, shit. yeah, just trying to figure out, Ugh. just re put put back together the pieces right so this was really kicking you while you were down oh for sure yeah but I mean, that, that was the kind of thing it's kind of that moment like where you have like you know drunks say they have that moment of clarity where it's like all right if i'm not gonna kill myself after this all right i guess it's time you're like you just let me like of course right of course yeah it's kind of like the cinemax the skinemax thing where you just gotta laugh about it like, yeah because in in some ways that's just probably I don't know. It, it, mm-hmm. I could read that as almost a blessing where it's like, I'm glad I didn't marry the person who would do Vern Troyer's oh. cocaine and fuck him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's not somebody I need and, to I marry. Mean, <laughs> I mean, for a long time, like when I found out she had a kid for a long yeah, time, that that, that that kicked me. I was like, that should have been my son. Sure. And then very quickly after that, um, after talking to many of my friends who uh, gave me the old Sharon Moonstrunk slap of mm. like, get over it. <laughs> uh, snap out of it. I was like, oh, what a huge bullet i dodged yes like Ma- super mario brothers b- bullet bill that yes. takes up half the screen <laughs> dodged can you imagine like that kid would be turning 18 this year wow. this would be the first year that i would no longer like all right i'm still gonna care about you and love you because of my son but i do f- i do physically and physically do not have to talk to that woman ever again right. Yeah, so, so that's I, kind of a blessing. Dodging a bow, big bullet, and then um, I guess like a coda to that is uh, I was in North Carolina at Chapel Hill for uh, the uh, the Improv Festival there, the North Carolina Comedy Arts Festival. At the time, it was called the Dirty South Improv Festival. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was there, and my mom. Oh God, this was probably like oh six, oh seven, somewhere in there. Uh, my mom, uh, my mom and dad always drove up to see the shows, but also like take me and Jeff Hawkins, my partner, uh, my comedy partner, out to dinner. And we get in the car. My mom hands me, uh, she's in the front seat. She hands me the uh, front page of the High Point Enterprise, the High Point Surprise, as we call it, uh, uh, life section. And the ex-fiance is uh, doing uh, High Point Community Theater, Bram Stoker's Dracula. She's playing the female lead. And my first movie had just sold. And I went, yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is good. I just start laughing, and Hawkins is like, "I don't know if this is good for your karma, kid." And I'm like, "No, this is this is God saying it's okay, buddy. It's okay. You dodge, you dodge a bullet on that one." I was like, mm, "Good for her. She's still acting. <laughs> Whatever." Uh, so I have no idea after that. And then I think like a year or so after that, she sent me the she sent me an email of like, uh, "You know, I'm really sorry what I did to you and all that," but it, it was very clear. Uh, I emailed her back. I was like, look, it's been a long time. We're different people now than we were then. Um, again, this is just you wanting to make you, your life must be a drama at all times. And you are the, always the star of it. This paragraph you just sent me, you said the words I or me 27 times. And you said my name once, <laughs> which tells me yeah. everything I need to know. Yeah. If you're looking for my forgiveness, fine. You have it. Right. But we're not we're not those same people anymore. We don't have that sort of thing. And then I just got back the hugest email of just vitriol, no paragraph breaks. And I was like, exactly. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> you wanted me to call you on that so you could just live out a little bit more of this drama. Yep. Sorry. Not having it. Not having it. Not having so what it. was the actual <clears throat> breakup night or you know, day? She left me on Halloween of two thousand, an hour before I had to be at work at that job. Before that Hollywood Blair's job. What how did it transpire oh well she had been missing for three days she had been staying at her friend's house okay who she eventually moved in with um you came back and it was like it was always the same thing like over the course of six weeks it was like hey uh, like i would she would text me or call me and say like hey it's such and such birthday tonight so i'm gonna stay out afterwards and hang out with the girls it was just an excuse to do cocaine and not do it around me and not come home because she was sad and she didn't want to look into the face of like you know the disappointment the, the disappointment but also like the the mess that she had made of this good thing um 
and then it was like another thing like oh this oh someone had a really bad breakup i guess i gotta make sure i take care of her and okay and then finally you know it was just like th- like i mean like three or four days in a row and then she came during that and it was like i need to talk to you and it was like even then even then like i have to be at work at six and you're here at four thirty to break up with me you coward you picked like again that's her major flaw. There was right. a shortcut to take. Yep. She knew there was you, an easy way around. It wasn't going to oh, be an all night talk. Oh, no, no. She wouldn't have to really do it. And then, of course, uh, she was like, well, you get to keep the cat. And I'm like, you're goddamn right I do. <laughs> I took care of that cat. It's a cat I didn't want. I wasn't a cat person at sure. the time. I became yeah. a cat person because this yeah. cat person is amazing. I mean, the cat that I had was amazing. It was her mom's cat that had kittens. We went over and looked at it. And she's like, can we? I was like, nope, I don't like cats. I don't want it. And then, of course, she got the cat. And then when she left, I still had the cat. My parents took care of the cat for six weeks while I was in Europe. And all that kind of thing. Like, you, you, know, you get to keep Moo Moo. And I'm like, you fucking goddamn right I do. I'm <laughs> the you, one that's taking care of this cat. And then I had that cat for another 16 years. Best thing to come out of that relationship. Right. I never asked for the ring back. I never asked for my four grand back. But no, I'm keeping this cat. This cat is amazing. So I'm curious, with all the shit that you've described. Oh, yeah. Um, it's so easy for anyone to track this down. I've given so many. <laughs> you know, like, but I'm curious so how, why it was her that broke up with you instead of like, like how long, like in your head, were because you just I was deal with it. No, because I was completely head over and heels in love. I can yeah, fix her. Blinded. I can support this. We can work sure. it out together. You know, my, my father is, uh, you know, like there's, like I was saying, there's a lot of addicts in my family. And all that right. kind of, uh, my father is disabled. He was in a car accident in 1978. Uh, I usually say that, you know, like my dad is my hero. My mom's the one that put him on that pedestal. Like she worked, uh, he dropped out of high school and lied about his age to go to Vietnam, you know, to join the Marines and all yeah. that kind of stuff. He'd be the first one to say that was not a wise decision. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, but when he had his accident, he couldn't rely on his physicality anymore because mm-hmm. he was a super strong athletic guy. He had to go back to college. <laughs> He went, uh, my mom works uh, for six years. My mom's a radiological technologist. She worked at night for six years in the emergency room because it was extra pay. And she put my father through college Mm -hmm. with a combination of the GI Bill. And then his undergrad, he went to North Carolina A&T. My dad went to a historically black college on a minority scholarship. (laughs) Uh, It's the 80s. You know, you could could do that. Uh, But he was, you know, he was 30. He had two kids and he was disabled. Um Graduate at the top of his class. You know, he was on the cover of the Greensboro News and Record for that, which my mom forced him to do because mm. my dad's very Irish Catholic. Like, no, I don't want to praise or that. Yeah, I don't, yeah. right? I've never heard him complain or anything like that. So my parents were were the example for me of like, you don't give up on the people you love. Right. Through thick and thin, you stick by them. You st- you stay by them. Um, a lot of a lot of lesser women would have left my father. And then growing up, actually, I've a couple of friends of mine. Uh, not thank God, not their moms, but like their aunts had had similar situations. There was a guy that I went to uh, school the arts with who I was really close friends with. His aunt, his uncle had a bad car accident and his aunt bailed on him mm. and still came to Thanksgiving. Like mm. it was no big deal and all wow. that. It's like, okay. So yeah. that's, yeah. That I was like, no, you don't give up on the people you love. You work on this. You're like, we'll, we'll get you through rehab. We'll like, I'll, I'll work. I'll get a second job. You don't have to do this anymore. Let's. <laughs> Let's get you headshots. Let's start getting you out there. Cause, and also, because I'm just a fucking idiot. Because <laughs> I'm just a fucking idiot. And I want to believe. And that's probably why I fell into improv so hard. It's the idea of like, you know, you are enough. And you bring yourself to the art form. And then the, the secret of being a better, more interesting improviser is being a better, more interesting person. And that means kindness and forgiveness. And like, I'm, I'm all in on that kind of stuff. Because mm-hmm. I'm secretly a big softy. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's why I didn't immediately like kick her to the curb, and sure. also that's why God bless all my friends too, because who weren't like tearing out their hair. I'm sure they were tearing out their hair, going like, "Dump her! What are what you doing? doing? What yeah. are you do-? But you know how it is. You can't. Yeah. Now when you're in that tunnel yeah. vision where it's just you know it, that's not an option. Oh yeah, uh, that's and that and because of that, I have always been very very careful that if there's a couple that I know that is very volatile. And like whether I'm friends with one of them or both of them, they're like, "That's it, man. I broke up with Stephanie. It's over." And I'm like, "I wait, I wait three weeks, a month mm-hmm. before I say how I actually felt, right? Because that's the last thing you do." Like, thank God, man. Yeah, she was a fucking bitch to you. She, we didn't like the way that she talked to you and on that. And then two days later, they're back together again. Right. And, and then, then you're the asshole. Yep. Because you know we told her. You yeah. know we told her. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then strangely enough, I kind of 
fell backwards. I kind of had a similar. I have a great girlfriend right now who's yeah. fantastic. Best thing ever happened to me. The girlfriend before her, uh, in hindsight, had a lot of the same qualities of the ex fiance, and I was still a little blinded to that. And then all my best friends, you know, Doctor God and the rest of those guys, are like, "What were, what were we going to say to you? Right. What were we going to say? You're yeah. in love. All you do is just been mad." At, Mad at us, and we had like shows and TV things to do. <laughs> right? Yeah, you want to keep it keep it light. Yeah, you we're know. working on we're working on a movie here. What are we gonna tell you? Your girlfriend sucks. You're directing. <laughs> <laughs> what was it that think drew you to these types of people? I don't know. I guess it like you say, uh, like we were saying, like the drug addict thing of like growing around drug addicts. It's one thing or another. Like you're like you're either really getting into drugs or like right. no drugs. I think it's sort of the the similar thing of like, well, if it's not family. I, I you know, like in your early twenties. Uh, I'm being very, very old school right now, and I apologize, <laughs> but I'm not wrong. Uh, when you're in your early twenties, hey, the sexy, hot, crazy girl, yeah, sure, and it's the drama. Like, and I don't seek out a lot of drama, sure. and it's not my bread and butter. It's not anything like that. And so when you have it, you think like you're in this huge passionate love affair and you're an right. artist right and, yeah yeah and you're in your mid-20s or like or even in your mid-30s where it's just like especially in hollywood where all you do is go out and talk about comedy or filmmaking or art or like what book you read have you not read that book oh my god it's incredible sure. you, you have to know about this documentary right like, yeah. oh my god that's so great madawan you haven't seen madawan we're watching madawan right <laughs> and so it's all that right, right. <laughs> And uh, so when you have that in your life and you don't have it for a lot, like it seems exciting when really it's poisonous. <laughs> yeah, right. It's anything sure. else. So it's like you can do mushrooms or you can do acid. It's when you're doing mushrooms and acid every day. Right. When people are like, no, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like, I know people now that can still take it, but like, I, I think I maybe smoke weed like once every two, three years. Sure. Yeah. Mostly just because it makes me sleepy. Right, and I yeah. I wake up at seven in the morning. Like I got shit to do. I right. can't I can't sleep it until noon anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have it. But I know people that can do it. Wake right. and bake, walk around all day, or or like yeah, this is my, oh this weekend we're gonna go up Joshua Tree. We're gonna do a bunch of mushrooms. I'm like yeah, that's great. Yeah, have fun. But it's like hey, it's Tuesday. I'm doing mushrooms. So like oh okay, buddy. Yeah. Um, and that's what it was like doing it with her. Like it right. was sort of doing necrotic. mushrooms every day. Yeah. yeah. And when you're in it, you don't know it. Right. Yeah. 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 So what are you gonna do? Well, yeah, I was going to ask what you've, what you kind of learned from all that. Seems like that's pretty much your answer. Yeah. You know? uh, were there times before you met your current girlfriend where, like, maybe there was like an inkling, you know, like there was, you could see, you know, maybe you were briefly seeing somebody or something like that, and then you saw the warning signs, and you'd be like, "Oop, gotta go," or no, honestly, um, between the fiance um, and then a lot of other people, like I had some good girlfriends in there but also some ones where it's just like oh we're both broken people we shouldn't be yeah, together right and then after after the most recent one before this current girlfriend at that point i had just given up sure uh to the point where like i just had a running joke not joke which is like any girl that would show interest in me is already telling me that there's something wrong with her <laughs> right. why why would you be interested in me who's clearly so broken and fucked up and we're like <laughs> I immediately was distrustful of that. Yeah. And so I dated a couple of girls who are v very good people and I'm still friends with them, but I was, I was complete unfairly to them. I was so far gone right. and messed up. Like I just needed time. So my time of that where I was like, nah, nah. And to the point where like the girlfriend asked me out, uh, my current girlfriend, when she asked me out, I said, um, uh, you know, you're a student at IO. I have a, a blanket, no students. I don't date students. You're not currently in my class, but when you graduate, let me know if you still feel this way. Number two, I just got out of a really long term. Like I'm not ready for anything. Right. Yeah. All right. And to her credit, she was just like, all right, well that wasn't a no. So <laughs> I'm just going to wait till you figure it out. And then we're going to, and then eventually I, once I realized that I was like, oh, you're a, you're a grown ass woman. Right. You're in your mid thirties. You have like a real job. You're doing improv because you enjoy it. Right. And it's something fun to do. And you take it seriously, but it's not a career. It's a definer, yeah, yeah. You're not trying to be a comedian. You're not right. trying to get on a, a, a UCB Herald team so that you can like get seen by CAA or none mm -hmm. of that. Uh, you're not a 22 year old actress. Right. I'm not taking advantage of you. Yeah. Fuck it. Let's go get that drink. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that's cool. That, so in a way, she was kind of what you had been in the past, as far as kind of not giving up on you and yeah, you know, yeah, kind for of sure, being the one to push it forward. Yeah, and then um, and everybody loves it across the board. And that's a good sign. Um, yeah. My, yeah, our families get along. Our her family loves me. My family loves her. Yeah. Across the board, all the friends, right? Especially the close guys, like the Dr. God guys were all like, oh, buddy. Oh. Like, I think after, like, the first couple of nights, or maybe even the actual first night of hanging out at Iowa West, and she went to the bathroom, and Gargiulo just looked at me and was like, oh, I like her. Because <laughs> Gargiulo's seen every right. fucked up relationship yep. I've had, right? <laughs> he didn't, And he met me not too long after uh, the fiance left me. So, like, he's heard all the story. <laughs> he knows everything. So he's like, oh, buddy. Oh, I like her. This is good. This is a keeper. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. And no one's changed their mind since. So. And how long have you guys been together now? Um, going on four years. Congratulations. Yeah, thank that's you. Awesome. September will make it four years, and we've been living together for about two and a half. Okay. So yeah, yeah. that's great. So that's yeah, that's just a question of when, not if. Like right. we're getting married. That's, that's awesome. Time. It's just like, all right, well, we're not in a hurry. We'll figure sure. it out. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't want to harp on it too much, please. But, uh, I imagine, like, what? how long did it, the night she broke up with you, the fact mm. that you were engaged, I feel like that must just add another layer. Like, did it just, how long did it take to really recover from that? Like, were you thinking, oh, I'm never going to find anybody again? Three this years. The person I was, three years? Three yeah. years, yeah. Yeah. Until I started out and doing stuff that made me feel good that I was self-generating. Mm -hmm. Like, I try, like, I'm a serial dater. Anyway, mm -hmm. like, I mean, why well, I mean that is serial relationship guy. Yeah. I do long-term relationships. So immediately after her, when I was working at the pool hall, and I was like, I was a good-looking guy, yeah, mid twenties, running a pool hall, like a twenty-seven thousand square feet, you know, you know, million dollar a month pool. I'm like, I'm, I'm doing okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I tried dating two girls at the same time Ooh. once. <laughs> yeah, never do it again because <laughs> I'm just emotionally I'm not built that sure. way. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. built the kind of way where it's like right. yeah. I can go. Well, if you don't like it. Whatever, like I, the, 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 the assholes, like I am, I am, I am physically incapable of being a fuck boy. I yeah. just can't. Me too. Me too. Yeah. So the, trying to do that and like that, like there was more times me crying about that than them. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm not treating you correctly. And why I don't know why you're here. <laughs> you're pointing it out. Yeah. Like, oh, it's fine. <laughs> why are they like, not so much fine, but they were all well, like, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then of course that just sort of like, oh, I can, I can, he's, you know, like I can fix him. I'm like, yeah. no, it's too broken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was once I started doing IO. Yeah, I started doing Found improv, your, mm -hmm. finding something that was just for me that I was good at, uh, and also for a long time. And like film, like when I went first went to film school, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I was like, I was a musician. Right. My parents are very much like, you go to college. We yeah. don't care what you and your sister go to college for, but you will go to college mm -hmm. and you will graduate. Mm -hmm. We'll pay for it, <laughs> but you're going. Yeah. Like that's not a question. This this whole idea of like, oh, a gap year, no. fuck, never in my family. <laughs> yeah. My parents would be like, are you fucking insane? No. Sure. You want to go, what, backpack across Europe? No. No. <laughs> Maybe after graduation. Yeah. yeah. Like, my, my like, like some of my roommates, like, my sophomore, junior year, they all went, like, for spring break, they all went on Mexican cruise together, and I intentionally did not go, because, like, my parents are working their ass off to give me the opportunity. They haven't been on a, on a cruise yet. I'm sure. not going. Right. Where do I get the balls? Right. Where do I get the balls to ask for that? Yeah. So... <laughs> I, I always kind of felt like a fraud, mm -hmm. like my first year at School of the Arts, because I was like, I, I was like, all right, I got to go to college. I don't know. This place has just opened up. Sure. I can. I don't have to quit my band. I can stay mm -hmm. with my it's I like to write. I've always liked to write short stories and stuff. So it kind of put together all the stuff I liked, which was like writing and acting and music. Yeah. And then you get there and like, I mean, you look in hindsight, like, of course, I felt that way. Look at all the talented motherfuckers yeah. that were in my class. Yeah. And then the next year. Didn't make it any better mm -hmm. when I was a sophomore and all the freshmen that were coming in. I was like, there's all these kids that have been like making movies for forever. They knew that they, like I saw E.T. when I was four and I right. knew I wanted to be a filmmaker. Like their whole lives had been in that. There were guys that had like their own editing systems in their dorm room. Yeah. Like there were guys that had better equipment the in school. their dorm room than the school <laughs> did. Yeah. It, at the time, honestly. Right. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. And I was like, oh, I have made a... I felt like I felt like Joe, I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> and like very arrest development. Yeah, yeah. And it was only and then at that time too, I was like, you know, I was super angry and you know yeah. and funny colored hair and black fingernails and all that. Sure. Uh so it was right I, yeah. So and even then by the time I got to IO, you know, I, I, even though I had already directed and sold a feature, I still felt like, oh I'm I'm not I'm not as good as the 
Dave Greens and the Jody Hills right. and the Craig Zobels of the world. Mm-hmm. I'm not I'm I'm not Rebecca Green. Fuck, you know? Uh and then that was one where I was like, Oh, I am oh I can do this. I can do this. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then and then that that's you know, it's you shouldn't go to improv to seek validation. Only you yeah, can give yourself exactly. that. But validation, I mean, improv is a hell of a tool. If yeah. valid if self worth is a house Improv won't build that house for you, but it will show you how to use a hammer. Sure. How to use a screwdriver. Yeah. Like, hey, buddy, I couldn't help but notice that you were trying to hammer in that nail and you've been using the backside of a wrench. Let me show you here this <laughs> yeah, hammer. Yeah, See yeah. how much easier this is? Right. Oh, this is easier. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I saw what you were trying to do with your life here. Yeah, yeah. let's get this wrap. <laughs> yeah. And then, and from there, like, uh, I've been I've been very, very blessed over the last you know fifteen or so years, right? To sort of definitely be, be in that world, and then and the school of the arts and uh, iOS slash pack theater. Uh, the the Venn diagram is getting fatter and fatter, which sure. I really like. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, I'm glad you you came out the other side and uh, are in a healthy, yeah, solid, yeah, as much as, much as possible. Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, she and I have matching tattoos. <laughs> so there you go. It's not covered. I, I keep every once in a while I make the joke of like, yeah, I should get like never again around it. But current girlfriend is like, um, no, I don't like that for multiple reasons sure. that you should know. There, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, yeah. like. Like, hey, I'm gonna, and I'm, I'm probably at some point I'll get covered up. But I, I kind of every once in a while I do look at it. And also, again, it's a funny. I mean, I've told this story on stage multiple times yeah. at improv festivals, or whatever. Right. And then you know, you hit them with the mini me thing, mm-hmm. and then you you know, I kick up because it's on my right ankle. Uh, it's the same place as hers. <laughs> And I like I I open it like I lift up and pull down the sock. I'm like, so if you ever see a girl that has one of these, run away, <laughs> run very very far away. Well, so what do you you got a uh, a new show out, right? That is correct. Yeah, uh, Doctor God's uh, animated sketch series called Helden. Okay, uh, just came out on Drink TV. It's a new OTT over the top uh, network. But if you have, uh, you can yeah, drinktv.com. Uh, but also if you have Roku or Sling uh, or Apple TV, Apple Four or above is what I found. If you can okay. get it, if you can get it on the App Store, you're great. Okay. Anything older than that, you're gonna have to go to the old. <laughs> laptop and watch it there sure but they're they're quarter hour episodes if you like mystery science uh, mystery science theater 3000 or beavis and butthead or robot chicken uh it's a original animation framing device it's all the apocalypses in the world have happened the uber apocalypse has happened and there's only one kid left on the planet there's only one person left on the planet it's a 12 year old kid named andrew and he uh is hanging out with a cyborg lady uh a giant an alien and uh, Kenneth, the fifth horseman of the apocalypse, uh, and since his uh, his parents' bar is still intact, uh, they all get uh, hammered on that and just watch the only form of entertainment left, which is a bunch of these cartoons <laughs> that he's got because uh, he's in his grandparents' house. And it's like you know a bunch of VHS tapes. Sure, yeah. So we took old um, public domain cartoons from the 1910s, 20s, and 30s and repurposed them, rewrote them, and, oh, cool. and, and revoiced them. Uh, most of it, uh, the first job is taking out all the racism because there's a lot, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a sketch in there that where we use some of it to like point out how fucked up it is and that, that's a neil gargiulo sketch and he handled it very very well mm-hmm. it's really really well done i'm very happy uh, how it came up but like we worked our asses off and we like we pitched it probably for about three years wow to the point where like we pitched it at every network twice mm-hmm. because new executives would come sure. in and they're like what else what, what do you got and we're like all right it's time to go back to comedy central guys <laughs> Let's go to Netflix again. Maybe these guys will like it. Um, and Matt Keel does our original animation of all those guys. Uh, and he's incredible. He did an amazing job on it. That's and, great. How yeah. many episodes are there? There's six quarter episodes for season one. Um, and it's like, I mean, we did a ton of work. I, I wrote like 130 sketches in two days. Wow. Yeah. I probably did over like 50 plus voices. And that's just my contribution. Sure. Multiply that by the other four guys in right. Dr. God. And that's how much content we generated so that we could get it down to just the creme de creme. Right. And like the average length of a sketch is like 20 seconds. Oh, okay. Because Drink TV, uh, God bless them, because they're, they're, they really got the show immediately. Mm-hmm. They wanted it. They they. It's definitely at the like the top end of their budget scale, and they're like, "Nope, this is it. We believe in it." And they were very good about pushing us, being like, "You guys are funnier than this. More funny. More like more more. You know, like like this is great." And it's like, but it doesn't need to be this long. Like, g- give us like, a bunch of more like five second like quick hits 
one-liners, you know, blackout sketches. And we were like, all right, cool. So they were very good about, you know, we were already pushing ourselves super hard. And then them being with us and reminding us that that's like, no, you guys can do more. You guys can do more. Uh, so I'm very, I'm very proud of it. Also, we have some of our Dr. God family, but also some of our Dr. God family celebrity friends like Derek Mears, who's Swamp Thing. Mm. He's in it. Go cool. Uh, Ms. Fitzpatrick, who's on CW, uh, the CW Significant Mother, but she was also in our movie, Blood Second Bastard. She's in it. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Mo Collins, you know, who we've yeah. known for a long time from Mad TV, but she's on Fear the Walking Dead and <laughs> Parks and Rec. Uh, Brett Davern from Awkward. And, you know, he played he played a beach boy, for God's sakes. <laughs> uh, so having all those guys, it's like a big party and a big family yeah. in the room. And then so if you wrote it, you directed it. Mm -hmm. And so it's the idea of like, all right, you get the person in the booth and you're kind of like, yeah, that's what I'm kind of looking for. And I try it this way. Run that. And so it's a rotation. So no one's ever being really like put down. Uh, but I will say that Neil uh, was the showrunner on it and lead producer. And like he, man, he did the Lord's work. Like, <laughs> it sounds like I always, it. I always make a point to give him an extra like sure. shout out. Because he did so much. Well, and, then, and then also the Shout Factory guys who bought our movie Blood Sucking Bastards and then partnered with us. They're the ones that uh, had all the rights to the cartoons. But they also, for the three years that we were pitching it, they were always our partners. Uh, we would pitch in the room with them together as well because they, they immediately got it as well. So much love to Shout Factory. They have the last two things that I've sold. <laughs> we being held in in Blood Sucking Bastards. Um, Shout Factory were like we're there for both of them, so I, I I owe those guys a lot as well. They 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 really believe in the old Doctor God. I've been a fan of them since they were the ones putting out like uh, the Freaks and Geeks DVDs. Oh, and dude, all yeah, that stuff, they you know? they they've cornered that market. Yeah, like, don't even try exactly and beat yeah. them. It's not possible. It's well, not that's possible. awesome. Um, Thank you. Congrats man. on all that. Thanks. Uh, where can people find you on social media? So, uh, social media wise, I have my uh, my website. Uh, it's boc dot com. I t s b o c dot com. B o c is what everyone calls me. That's my nickname. Uh, feel free, please. I will. I will uh, boc. Yeah, and then um, social media. Uh, I'm lucky to have uh, the same Twitter and Instagram handle, which is very rare. It is. Yeah, it's at b three o c b the number three o c. Because uh, that was an old improv show I was doing. Oh, nice! Uh, yeah, one person, uh, a one person show called B Three O C. So I was like, oh, I got, oh, good. No one else has that. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, and then Facebook. If you still do that, if you're an old grandma <laughs> like me, if you're still using Facebook, is uh, the real Brian, the real Brian James O'Connell, and then I have Improv One to One with Brian James O'Connell. So uh, sort of plenty of ways to get in touch. <laughs> well, thanks so much for coming on and and Thank you. sharing the bad times that yeah. indeed made good stories. I'm uh, <laughs> I'm I'm hopefully I didn't make this into a two parter podcast, <laughs> no. and it's just again me talking because I don't know when to shut up. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for having me, John. <laughs> yes, yay, course. new friend. <laughs> that was the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much to Brian for coming on and talking about. A really shitty relationship, and I'm, and I'm glad that uh, he's he's moved on and uh, is in a good, solid relationship now. Uh, be sure to check out Hell Den, Brian's show on Drink TV. Uh, it is a crazy ass cartoon, post apocalyptic, a lot of fun. I laughed a lot watching it. So, uh, Hell Den, two words on Drink TV, and uh, yeah. That's all I've got for this week. So, without further, that's all I've got for now. So, until next Wednesday, keep laughing. <laughs>